Phrase Most Wanted presents. Oh well, it's we're going to be promoting a charity book called. Shit, I'm a brain fart right here. I'm back up and we're going to go again. I had it open. Why the fuck did it go? I had it open on my phone. I was trying to load it to Kindle so I could read it, but it would let me read it on Kindle, but it wouldn't save it to my Kindle. Mm. Oh, that's They don't like you exporting shit <laughs> to their little toy. So, okay, let me go on. Well, hello, and welcome to Gallup Phrase Most Wanted. I'm Ross Haken, and today I'm joined by James Sylvester, the editor of a collection, a charity collection called Temporal Logbook 3, Change Lives. Say hello, James. Hello there. Thanks for having me. All right. Folks, this is the second missing episode of Gallup Phrase Most Wanted because my recording things uh, failed, so me and James are going to have the same <laughs> conversation a second time. Um, um uh, technology and an old get like me sometimes doesn't go hand in hand. Um, James, first let me tell me a little bit about the project and the charity that it is supporting. No problem. Well, this is the the third temporal log book, um, which is a series of uh, unofficial, unauthorized uh, charity collections published by Pencil Tip Publications, who are based in Vancouver and do an awful lot of cult TV, a lot of Doctor Who stuff, um, some uh, some horror collections as well. Um, this is the third in their series. The first temporal log book, which um, I contributed to, uh, was back in 2015, and just a selection of short stories, one for each doctor. That was followed up a couple of years later with the, the second collection, and this third time, um, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have um, collected and edited it. Um, they all support good causes. Uh, the first one um, was an HIV charity in Canada. Uh, the second was a mental health organization. Um, and this time, because I'm editing it, um, I very uh, Bob very kindly let me choose the charity and I'm chosen to support Settled which is a UK based charity where I live uh, designed to give advice support uh, and guidance to EU citizens who have made a home in the UK and have been somewhat dumped on metaphorically um, by the uh, UK's exit uh, from the European Union that sounds like a great cause um, um as an Anglophile and American, we have similar issues in this country when it comes to people who want to come here, and I think it's a good cause. Um, so um, this one, um, I only had a chance to read two, and I'm going to try to mimic the same conversation me and Jake had the first time. <laughs> um, and I read the first two, which is the Fifth Doctor story, which is Fifth Doctor and Turlo go to check on Dorothea Dodo Chaplet, um, and it's I found it an incredibly poignant story in the fact that, you know, Torlo even asked him, is this what you do? You just leave people. And, you know, we, I think all Doctor Who fans have, when they've seen the war games, are going, it's kind of, what the hell? Is he just leaving? Um, but it's a really moving story of the Doctor re-examining how he's treated someone he supposedly cared about. Uh, and I thought it was real good. And I like the pairing of just the two of them. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's something that stood out when when Luke Pitcher, Luke Dyer, uh, Luke Dyer, sorry, who who wrote this story, um, and we'll give him his uh, very much uh, give him his due because it's the first thing Luke's ever um, had published. I think it's actually the first story he's ever written. Um, wow, we, it's yeah. really good, folks. If that 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 amazes me that if this is his first story because it is mm. well constructed. There's no, it's just to the point and it hits the emotional beat because it, it, it affected me a little bit. I was like, wow, I'd never, I had not looked at that in this point of view and to look at it from that doctor's point of view with Turlow being the one going, did you do the right thing? Yeah, and um, I think what actually made it more poignant at the time when, when Luke first pitched this, it wasn't long after uh, Jackie Lane had passed away. Oh, um, okay. And... Um, I don't know if that I've never actually asked him whether that was the inspiration for it, but when we when we got the pitch, it's like yeah, uh, it, it, it was very very poignant, um, and for all the reasons you've you've mentioned, um, the, the pairing of, of of the fifth Doctor and Turlo, who's perhaps his relationship a little pricklier than than some of the other pairings you, you might have thought of. Um, there's always a, a level of suspicion there, Turlo being yeah a, a little bit aghast at it's, as you say, is this what you do? You just leave people behind and move on. Um, and the doctor being forced to confront what effect traveling with uh, with, with, with him might have on a person, um, and you know, because we wanted to to mix things up a bit and not just have a one to one to thirteen run of stories, um, I 
chose to to open with uh, with, with with this one um, because I do think it nailed the brief on what the book's supposed to be about. That impact, the changed lives of of meeting the Doctor, and yeah, Luke's story I think hit the brief right on the head. Yeah, it it, it really struck me um, because I I'm a big D- Dave um, Davison was my doctor until Matt Smith came along, mm-hmm. and then I was like, sorry, dude. I, I, <laughs> Matt, Matt, 11th hour kind of hit it and when I found out me and Matt Smith had the same birthday it was even <laughs> okay. oh, there we go. The uh, me, him, my sister and the Statue of Liberty all share a birthday <laughs> um, but it re- he, there's something about his portrayal and I think he's the c- closest to the first Doctor in the original series in some ways as in the way he interacts with people he's a little gruff He's little grandfathery, and I think Davison tried to portray him as an older person in a young body because mm. I'm I'm really young for this part at that point. Now there have been doctors, a couple doctors yeah. younger than he was, but I like the dynamic of Turlo and him, and that, that we only got one, we didn't even get one story with them. I think it would have been neat to see them do a series of stories, just the two of them. Yeah, because I really think I think in his ear that the. I think the sweet spot for him really is Turlo Teagan. Mm-hmm. As much as I like Nissa and I have learned to appreciate Adric, not you know, as older <laughs> fans, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, quiet, <laughs> you know, you get to know Matthew Waterhouse by seeing him interviewed and seeing what a nice man he is and going, yeah, oh, yeah. I take back everything I said about you, not the stuff I said about Adric, but the stuff I said about you. <laughs> But there's a great chemistry between them, and I like Turlo as a character, and I think Turlo is a, you know, and and I found on the Big Finish stuff that some of the Peter Davison stuff early on doesn't speak to me, and I don't think it's as good as some of the Sixty stuff or some of the Sylvester stuff or some of the Paul McGann stuff. But Big Finish has it. I mean, Big Finish has improved and improved and improved and improved. I think it's got they've yeah. mastered how they tell stories, and I also they found a way to use Davison's voice, and I think this hits that spot for me. Is that's that's the way I see Davison. Yeah. You know, he is a bit prickly. He is a little detached and unsentimental. In, and I mean that in a guarded way. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Completely. Completely. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's to... sometimes lost on, on um, in readings of him. He's, it'd be a little bit blasé or cliche to say, well, oh, he's the most human. Uh, he's the most human of the doctors. Ah, hmm. no. Not so sure that he is. Well, I mean, if your you know if your your father or paternal figure is cut off and emo- emotionally guarded, yeah, maybe. But, it, <laughs> but it, it, I heard Peter's voice in it, and I really heard Turlo in it, and it was really, and it is because Dodo's one of those companions that the actress was not served by the material, because when she's in a good script that's good for her, she's great. When she's in a script that doesn't, it could be generic female companion one. Yeah. It's not, you know, I would, um, I have, as an American, bashed the gunfighters most of my life since reading it because the, <laughs> the, you know, the accents are Canadian and racist because we don't sound like that. There are the most of the one guy that sounds close sounds like a, is Canadian. The rest of you do not sound like it. You know, but <laughs> but I record, I reevaluate. I was on All Time and Space, and that was the one they invited me to be on, and I went, you know what? Dodo's really good in it. It's a comedy, and she nails it. Mm. So, yeah. you know, but, you know, but it's, you know, the character herself is, you know, kind of disserved in her exit, kind of cast away. In it. Oh, completely. And, and I think he captures that emotional thing without it being about that. You know, it's about the doctor. Is, this isn't the first doctor the time the doctor has just left somebody. Mm. And that to reevaluate it, and if you said, like you said, maybe it was her her, her death because she's only been gone for mm. 18 months two years yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and you know she would have been and th- i think it's sad that she didn't do a lot of fan stuff because i think she would have like carolyn johns gone oh wow you love me because i think mm. you know um but uh, it really touched me i really enjoyed that part of it and it, i'm glad i you know because i i didn't have a lot of time so i just basically i'm gonna read the first two thoroughly yeah. and kind of get them in my head instead of trying to rush through and read all of them uh-huh. Um, so, but I really liked it. It really, I really enjoyed it. He did a great job. He certainly has, yeah. 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 Um, how much uh, before we go on to the next one? How much editing do you really have to do with these? I mean, is it? It's it's a little bit um, mixed. I mean, we've got we we have a really good mix of writers. So we have some established professional writers. We've got a couple of people, uh, or three people, I think, who have done 
work for for big finish in one form or another who generally know how to construct a story and we have some um you know relatively experienced um fan fiction writers as well and some new people um so I, you know, I wouldn't say anybody needed their hand holding at all but some stories would need a little bit more advice or structure um uh, than, than others um so yeah it, it depends on the story and, and the individual a lot of it, it it's not like um I'm not I'm not the world's greatest um, grammar person at all, so I, it's not <laughs> commas and colons I'm looking for. It's about how the how the narrative flows, how the story reads, and and how that's going to be introduced to the reader. Um, so it, it, there was quite a bit of work over the thir- over the 13, 14 stories, um, and I'm grateful to Brenda who did uh, picked up a couple of those jobs for me, and Alison again. I'm grateful uh, very much to Alison anyway for even having the time to write for us because of all the work they do with Big Finish, but also for editing my story that I ended up having to write uh, after we lost a writer. Um, so, yeah, it was quite involved in places, but everyone involved, all of the authors, they know how to write stories. They know how to write good yeah, stories. Yeah, yeah I'm, um, I'm terrible. Um, I, you know, I, I work through email <laughs> because I work at a hospital and a lot of it's done via email. And my boss is like, your grammar is atrocious. I said, I can just think about how hard it is to write it. I, someone goes, because I did theater and stuff, I'm nerdy. And they mm-hmm. go, did you ever want to write? It's like, God, no. God, that's <laughs> hard. Yeah, it's hard. I love listening to writers talk about how they do it. Um, mm-hmm. Specifically, and like comedic writers are kind of ones I want to hear how they develop a joke yeah. or, or a routine. Uh, but it's really hard. And I read uh, Davies and Benjamin Cook's tome of about and it was interesting to see them talk about how to write a Doctor Who story and it oh, if, if you haven't read it I forget what I'm blanking on the name of it behind the scenes or whatever and it's just that uh, yeah, their yeah, correspondence yeah. of during when he's writing the end of his run um, and it's just difficult so I it, it really amazes yeah. when I read these some of these projects and I've bought a handful over the years I've got some from 30 years ago on my shelf I've got <laughs> I, I think the last one I bought was the one about um, the premise of it was all the doctors from Timeless Child and Paul Haney did the art uh uh-huh, yes yeah, yeah yeah and I did that um, but I tend to buy the essay ones some um, some of those I like those How I Geeked by Stephen Webb edited that one I think yeah. and that but this one I, li- I, I like these ones and I we had Paul Cook on for his project early in the year but let me to quit Gavin and talk about the next one, um, which is the War Doctor one. I really love that one. Uh, the fact to see the War Dollar Doctor in a graveyard full of the, you know, those that have died in the Time War was very moving, very touching. Um, mm. And I, you know, I grew up. A, my dad was a Marine general, and we had to go to Arlington. His office was right by Arlington Cemetery when I was a child. You could see the graveyard from his office window. But to see him and that, the, you know, I understand while well, viewing how he dealt with people who died and he fought wars and his father fought wars and his father-in-law fought wars, um, that, you know, there is a, and it's not something he talked about. Mm. And you knew it had an effect on him. Yeah. But it's not something he would share and he would, you, you would ask him and he goes, there's nothing I can tell you that'll make you understand it, you know. And my one of my brothers joined the Marines like him, and I chose not to, and I but he didn't want me to. When I said, you know, what can you tell me? He said, I can't tell you anything. You, I did yeah. what I had to do, and you will do what you have to do, and that's it. The rest is it. He did, didn't want to or could not verbalize it. And there is mm-hmm. there's a that, and I really felt a little bit of that in this story. I really liked it. I love that the name of the graveyard is Lament. Yeah, because that is more accurate to a graveyard. So, I mean, what what's your take on that story? Uh, well, as, as we, we said this before in, in our missing recording. Then we got, <laughs> I'm, I'm delighted and moved with with with, with how it's with the effect it's had on you personally as a reader. And I know Sean Collins, who wrote that, who has done a lot of um, work around um, you know, Doctor Who and, uh, of his own uh, before coming to us, will be over the moon uh, to know that you've had that personal connection to it. Again, when he was pitching it, um, he wanted to focus very much on, uh, in his own words, the the enormity of death. And that's not just in terms of the volume of people that, well, any war, but certainly something, you know, a fictional uh, concept like the Time War would, would involve, but also that complete um, feeling of being overwhelmed, uh, that losing a loved one, losing people you care about, 
has on you. Um, and I think the War Doctor is a difficult character to write for in some ways, but also perhaps the most freest because so little has been written um, written and performed about him um, so far. Uh, and you know you know where his end point is. So, yeah, in some ways, you've got to write about the Time War. In other ways, you probably have more of a free palette than, than, than anything else. But I think the way that Sean's approached it is, is really tastefully beautifully done and it handles what could be it 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 can be gratuitous to talk about masses of death mass volumes of death and dead bodies and and graveyards and tombs everywhere um and i think the way sean approached it was was very tasteful and very reflective so it was a yeah it's it's a it's a favorite in there yeah and and that's kind of the thing is i'm not a fan of of graveyards um i've been around you know the memorial and uh, as we talked before is like you know um my mother is my wife and me went for my mother's funeral and it's uh, we're descendant of Thomas Jefferson and we can she's buried in the family plot on the mountain mm-hmm. in Monticello and my wife asked me it's like do you want to and I just I don't like graveyards no one's going to come and visit me after a generation or two and it's not and but this this made me think about the times where we would go to military services and you know yeah. uh, we, we went for vet we went for a memorial day one with my mother she took us um and it was quite moving and it's uh, a friend of mine who made from bad choices in his life and was unable because of it is never you know was unable to go to his mother's funeral so me and my best friend stood up we we're like well we need to go for him because he's on mm-hmm. and to be at one of those and to see to kind of be on the outside especially a war one because i i'm of the age of some I, there are two young ladies i went to high school with whose fathers went to vietnam and never came back in any way shape or form yeah, they were shot down, and they never yeah. came home. They didn't have a body, nothing. And it's fifty years later, and I know to the day it still affects them. And there is this this thing of loss that mm. is unique to that. And I think that Sean handles it quite gracefully because it's mm. not about because in Doctor Who, Modern Who, we talk about the Time War. We talk about that the Doctor does some pretty, and even in Old Who, his. You know, he starts wars. Things happen because of him interfering yeah. and trying to correct something. But he always leaves it to the people he meets to do the dirty work, as it were, to fight the yeah. war and die. Yeah. And it's, I think, putting the war doctor in a place where he has to kind of think about, wow, what are others who come here thinking? Because, you know, and I really love that he called, that he calls the graveyard world lament. Because yeah. it's more accurate. Because in America, we give pretty names to our graveyards it's you know it's kind of <laughs> creepy and weird forest garden it's not a garden you know we use that forest and garden and stuff and it's just kind of weird and i really i graveyards you know to me are kind of they're sad heavy places and i thought the story was melancholy but not you know not it, it hit that right level that perfect tone i think yeah, it wasn't wallowing in it. It was it was just right there. It made you think of it. And I know, she, yeah, as I said, Sean's going to be delighted you had that personal reflection. And and I am because that's exactly what we wanted with with these stories. We wanted it to be to be about to emphasise that point of your life is not going to be the same. Maybe for better, maybe for worse after some kind of encounter with a doctor. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 thrilled that you've had that uh, a personal connection to both of them. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, they're both really good. Well, we had talked before. Tell us about some of the other authors. You had talked about two uh, two people that are working for Big Finish and their stories. Yeah, Alison, um, who, as I said, I'm over the moon. Alison's doing an awful lot of work for Big Finish at the moment. Uh, wrote the Dementia Canon Rose Tyler series. Um, has just been released this this last week. Mm. Um, I love the first also, one. I'm looking forward to yeah, the second. I was indeed. surprised how much I love the first one. I, I know. I think I was a bit the same. I was um, like, yeah, I'll it's... give it a try. I was like, oh, wow, this is mm. – okay, this is one I, I wasn't expecting yeah. it to be this good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I was a bit the same, but it, it, it comes out really well. And the um, Bambera unit uh, revival yeah, I haven't gotten that that did. Um, Alison wrote for that as, as well, and, um, yeah, he's doing a lot of work. So I was just delighted. It was one of those strange connections during lockdown. Alison was one of those people who you, you meet on Twitter and you, 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 know, you end up looking out for people because there was nothing else going on in your day and you wanted to <laughs> – Talk to that's how somebody. I met. That's how I met half the half of yeah. half of my doctor. I don't have any Doctor Who fans in my real life. People uh-huh. will sit and watch it with me as a good friend. And sometimes they like it. And I convinced my best friend to do a podcast about it because she. I got her to watch Modern Who when my niece, my goddaughter, was a baby. Because 
she would be up all night walking the baby and watching <laughs> New Who. And then I, I tricked her into watching my Old Who by making her watch uh, uh, An Earthly Child. And I said, let's right. watch the documentary first. And she's she, – because she's a uh-huh. – she went, they did this on how much money and how – and it blew her mind. So she, then she started the great rewatch of that. It took her about two and a half years. Excellent. But, you know, it's – you know, but I, that's how I met all my Twitter fans. Yeah. Half of my Twitter fans are friends. You know, I've become friends with people on Twitter just being bored and talking Doctor Who. Yeah, absolutely, and that, that's that's certainly how, how we met. So I was over the moon that uh, that the last wrote was a story. Russell McGee does um, sound engineering for Big Finish. I think he's worked most recently on the um, on, on the Gallifrey uh, the, on, on the war set. Um, he wrote our fourth Doctor story. Rob Nisbet um, has also done stories for for, for Big Finish. Um, so they've been great to work with. As I said, I think at the start we tried to get a mixture of, new, of brand new writers and established writers and some you know, professional writers. Um, so having the the involvement from Big Finish and having someone like Yiji who did the uh, Yiji so did the foreword for us, I think gives a real validation to to the collection uh, and it's a real boost to everybody who's got a story in there. I think actually, yeah, there, there's some um, there's, there's some big voices attached to this. Um, so it's been a yeah, it's been a pleasure to deal with them. That's great. It's I, I'm I'm gonna continue. You were, you were nice enough to send me a proof copy to read, <sighs> and I'm sorry I didn't have enough time to read it all. Um, so tell us how people can get the book and where to find it. And I'll also post this all, but why don't you just give them a where, – where do they need to go look for this? It's uh, available on Lulu, uh, which is a print-to-order uh, print site. Um, all of Pencil Tips um, uh, soft copy books uh, are available on there. So when you go to order, there won't be an e-version. Uh, there might be, some, uh, might be one at some point in the future, but right now – um, all the books are, are soft copy prints to order, so you can you can order that from anywhere in the world, and Lulu will will ship it to you pretty quickly. Um, the yeah, the link I've I've sent you in, on Twitter now, so uh, if you want to add that to the video, that would be extremely yeah. much appreciated. Yeah, yeah. I will add it to. I don't do these on video yet; uh, it is only audio, but I will post uh-huh. it in the yeah. description, and I will put <laughs> it in. Um, I will share it on all three of my Twitter feeds. <laughs> oh, good man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Um, well, that's good. I, again, James, thank you for coming on. Thank you for doing it twice in one day. Oh, you're um, welcome. Uh, but yeah. this will be going up the same day uh, because that's the slot I kind of picked for it. So it'll be up sometime later today. Um, folks, please check this out. The, these, I want to say this not only about this one, but all of them. These charity things that fans work very hard to do for good causes, I think, are one of the best things about fandom. As an older fan, I, you know, I. The internet and fan fiction to me was something weird and strange and odd, and you kind of looked side-eyed at it. And now, as I've seen some of it, and I've seen some people do it and become um, become involved in it and become professionals from it, I think it's a great thing. So I'm looking forward to seeing this um, and, and re- finish reading it, and I hope it has a great um, outcome. It raises a lot of money for the charity you picked. And yeah, thanks in advance to anyone who's interested. Um, I, I know times are hard, money is tight for a lot of people right now, but if you are able to, it, it's going to be greatly appreciated and you'll have some lovely stories to read. Yeah, I appreciate it. Well, folks, thank you. Thank you again, James. Thanks for having people. Please check out this pro, um, uh, this book and order it uh, and help the charity. It's a good cause. And, folks, you can find us on Twitter at, at Gallifrey's MW Pod. Um, So reach out and tell us what you think. And until we're back, we look forward to seeing you somewhere in time or space.